Hello there and welcome to this episode of Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. I'm Alan Waddell and we come to you from the University Center as the Lions are just wrapping up a shoot around here for this week and coach welcome to your show here and uh, this was a, a crazy week for your club you had a, a trip over to Florida with back-to-back -back games and also finals week a lot going on for your program. Kind of been the way it is Alan the whole year you know I mean we've been on the road a lot since the start of the season uh, it's been a very hectic first half um, really looking forward to the second half and maybe things getting into league play, at least they kind of settle down a little bit and we get on a, more of a normal type schedule. And obviously it's been well documented that, you know, we played 11, we've played so far 11 of our 13 games on the road. And, you know, when, when you go play a road game, it's not like you leave that few hours before the game, report there to the, to the gym and, and, and play and go back, you know, you're there the day before. And, uh, and travel has been hard on our guys and we're serious here about the education they get. When Southeastern offers a great education. And um, so, you know, them finals, that took a lot out of our guys, too, and uh, in, a, in a good way. I'll tell you this, a very unique situation playing Central Florida and South Florida just because of the way you played. You played uh, one night and then turned around and played the next day in a noon game. So uh, really two games within 24 hours. It's a very difficult thing to play, uh, you know, high-level Division One schools. It'd, it'd be difficult to to play anyone, but especially two quality teams like South Florida and Central Florida back to back like that is very difficult and a great challenge uh, for our players. I was proud of the way that they rose the occasion though for both games. Well, uh, we're going to take a look at those highlights against Central Florida and also South Florida. We'll also take a look at the highlights of an exhibition game against Dillard. Uh, that final exhibition game, Coach, now the second season begins. Uh, I know you've obviously the first part of the season is very important, but now it gets amped up a little bit as conference play turns. Well, well no question. Uh, you know, I think you'll see that around the, the country and as all all teams begin to interleague play. These are the games that really matter. Now certainly we, we've wanted to win every game that we've played. We've battled hard to do that. But really now you're beginning to start saying, now what we've telling our players is this is more like final exams, you know, your, 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 your chapter test and, and your homework's over with. It's time to start to, to start focusing in on these league games. And what we really need to do, you know, the Southland, uh, if you look at the way our format is set up in league play or for the tournament, there's a chance to have a double bye. And that's a very that's a very unique situation, but it's a great way to reward those teams that do very well during league play. So what we need to do is, and, and our league's very tough, and it's going to be very difficult to do this, what we need to do is try to put ourselves in the best position possible to have the, the easiest road that we can have once we get to the conference tournament. No doubt about it, as the second season begins coming up on the road at Stephen F. Austin. So let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll take a look at all the highlights from the previous week right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern Basketball. Inside Southeastern Basketball is made possible by support from friends of Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center for Housing located in Hammond, Louisiana. Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry serving Tangibaho and Livingston Parishes. They strive to help low-income, elderly, and disabled citizens obtain safe, decent, and affordable housing by using volunteers to build and repair. Homeowners pay for the building materials based on terms they can afford. The Fuller Center is supported by three retail stores, which accept donated items from the public. The reused store features construction supplies, appliances, and furniture. The Fuller Shop carries housewares and decorative items for the homes as well as books, videos, and jewelry, while the Rabbit Hole sells gently used clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Visit all three stores at 955 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond or call 985-419-0256 to schedule a pickup. For details on volunteer opportunities, find them on Facebook under Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center or visit www.gingerfordnorthshore.org. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. Your Southeastern Lions were on the road in Orlando, Florida to take on Central Florida. Here's the highlights. All right, Coach, here you are on the road, a chance to, to be on ESPN and play in this game uh, against Central Florida. It was, it was nice for me. I had a chance to sit back and watch you guys uh, take on the Knights. 
Well, you know, I think that's our – you mentioned us being on ESPN. I think that's our sixth, fifth or sixth game that we've been – We've been on ESPN. That's great for recruiting, great exposure for our players, great environment. A lot of you know, a lot of people thought we'd have an opportunity when you go on these trips to go to Disney World and so forth. We didn't make that happen. We were on a business trip uh, there, playing the the, the the Golden Knights as they call themselves. Coach came out really started this ball game uh, well, and this would be a game that you played well the entire night, uh, all the way to the finish. Our players played extremely hard. We were obviously playing without Zay Jackson. Y'all documented that earlier in the show. Um, and so we had we didn't have a lot of time to retool as he had gotten hurt that Friday night prior to us leaving on Sunday. Uh, and the way that the players uh, stepped up, we had that you're seeing Zach Rump there, freshman walk-on player from Montgomery, Alabama. He's one of the players that kind of stepped into the fold and filled some of the void there. Coach, and let's talk about this guy for a minute. Josh Fillmore had an outstanding ball game in this one. Josh Fillmore. The great thing about Josh, first of all, he's had a great a great season so far. He's only a sophomore. Uh, feel like he's one of the better perimeter shooters in the NCAA, and we expect great things from him the rest of the season and continued career. And the great thing about Josh, he's from Orlando. See, that was a special game for him. Big shot there by Daniel, knocks it down. Daniel Greaves, the last three or four games, has really began to come into his own. Uh, I just had an incredible night against Winthrop here at home at, prior to leading the trip and had another good game against Central Florida. Big three there by Cedric Jenkins, knocks it down. Cedric Jenkins had 22 at a career high. Uh, for for himself and, and, and obviously here as well as y'all know that he had transferred from Southern Mississippi. Uh, great, great young man. Great to see him play well. He's going to help us as we head into league play. Go, going a little run right there. They had stretched it out to an eight-point lead. You make a little run real quick and get it right back in the, right back in the ball game. Well, it was back and forth the whole night. You know, opportunities. We had several opportunities. One of the things. See, nice job executing there. Uh, Cedric hitting a long three. Um, again, gave us an opportunity to tie the score up 24-24. They go on a little 6-0 run after your 8-0 run, kind of little back and forth runs there in the first half and another three ball uh, by Daniel. Beautiful pass, Josh penetrating, drew a lot of traffic. Uh, Daniel filled his spots, what we call filling a spot. He just comes in there behind him. And you can see those guys doing a great job of sharing the ball and playing together as those balls bounce around each of the players out there. Good job of, of teamwork among the lines. Jump to the second half here. Uh, this was a game that you know, like we said, we come down to the wire, and Josh Fillmore, another nice drive there, goes up with the right hand, and a tie ball game here with 18 minutes to play. Yep, same thing. Again, it's a hard-fought game throughout the night. Nice nice play, we thought, by Devontae. I ended up getting a foul called out of it, but he still did a good job protecting the basket. Coach, this was a game that came down to the final wire. Uh, ended up dropping this ball game by five. Josh Fillmore, outstanding ball game in this one, but maybe one of the better games you played all year. Well, I was really proud of our players. Uh, Certainly Josh, and, and what was rewarding about Josh is Josh is from Orlando. Uh, Central Florida chose not to recruit him, and I, I'm not so sure that after the game that they may not wish that they could have rethought that a little bit. He played outstanding, but he's been outstanding for us all year. He's had a great year. But what I was most proud about is we were playing without our leading score, and you know, a lot of times it, that can go either way. You know, your team can, oh, uh, we, we've lost our leading score, and, and just kind of go out there and go through the motions. Ours took it as a challenge, which I was proud to see, uh, and everybody elevated their game a little bit. Uh, had an opportunity to win it. You know, we're down three. They hit a, a long three right there, uh, just at the one minute mark or so to. To, to push the, to the lead to six, end up losing by five. But uh, I thought our guys great, gave a great effort, and, and I hope it, that's indicative of the progress they've made since the start of the season. So the Lions played very well against Central Florida and then had to turn around on a quick flight, quick uh, uh, trip, as they would take on South Florida the next day. Here's the highlights. All right, Coach, quick turnaround as you, you would go down to South Florida now uh, to take on the Bulls. and. This was, again, no excuses, but a very quick turnaround 12 hours later. Uh, that, you know, very tough schedule um, in, in, in the, what, the way the schedule laid out. And you can see one thing that they're doing there in South Florida. They've come out pressing, thinking that, anticipating that we may not have fresh legs. Didn't bother us much. The guys did a good job of handling the press, and they didn't get into it too long because of the way we attacked. Uh, however, you know, uh, th their size uh, was a huge factor in this game as they started two seven-footers. and. Ended up giving some problems. They, they scored uh, right at the rim in the first four or five possessions of the game. But you're seeing us make some nice plays and it began starting to battle back in this thing. Yeah, no doubt. As uh, firing some three balls. Cedric Jenkins with a nice three from the corner there. One thing I want to point out, and you'll see this in the Cedric highlights. Again, it was yeah. another long three. 
One thing I want to point out uh, that we'll see in these highlights here is South Florida came into this game coach shooting like 29% from three point. They shot 53% in this game. They just had one of those nights where they couldn't miss. They did, and then they did a great job. And, and you know, our defensive plan was set around. We were playing the numbers a little bit, knowing that we had played the night before, and really feeling like that that if we could uh, force them to shoot the basketball size outside because of the size disadvantage that we did have, we'd have a you know it may help us. But uh, to credit them, they. They took the shots that we were giving them and they knocked them down. You see an Ochi on a little clear out that we ran for him. Uh, Ochi does a good job. He's very athletic, and, and some of the, the bigger post players guarding him have a hard time keeping him in front of him. That's Josh Fillmore off a little set play that we ran. Nice job of entering the ball to him and Josh finishing. It's a very nice backdoor cut. Here's a shot. And a ball, ball deflected off the shot, uh, and a good job of Dante running it down, putting it back in the hole. Coach, I gotta just just ask you: Do you think your team was tired the next day, playing so quick back to back? Played well, came out firing. Uh, South Florida shot extremely well from behind three point, which they had not done all year. Uh, but you got their best effort on that day. I don't think there was any question. They had played a very rigorous schedule as well, and they had just come off a game at Seton Hall. They had played Alabama as part of a road trip themselves, and they had lost several games in a row. So they were really pointing to this game as a way to kind of get them back on track, as both teams were. And uh, so we, we did get a great effort from them. Uh, I thought our guys were a little bit slow start, and obviously a, about a 12-hour turnaround for us and turn around and play, and that's, that's life right now at Southeastern until we can, we can grow our program. And uh, eventually, you know, I don't think we'll have to do those type of things. Uh, but, but it is what it is for the moment, and there's certainly no excuses. We didn't, we didn't make any excuses with our players. I didn't even bring it up. We just expect them every time we walk out on the floor, whether it be for practice or games, that they give us their best effort. And I thought they did that. Again, was I conscious of the fact that we may, legs may not quite be what they would have were the night before. Again, great effort, great, and really poured a lot of emotion into that game the, next, the night before. Again, could have gone either way. Certainly not. We didn't. We were just weren't quite as quick. Uh, but our guys fought hard. Again, at first half, second half, there were a couple of times we were right there to make a game out of it. But again, credit South Florida. The better team won on that particular day. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the highlights as the Lions had their last tune-up before conference play right here at the UC against Dillard. Right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern Basketball. Inside Southeastern Basketball is made possible by support from friends of Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center for Housing located in Hammond, Louisiana. Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry serving Tangibaho and Livingston Parishes. They strive to help low-income, elderly, and disabled citizens obtain safe, decent, and affordable housing by using volunteers to build and repair. Homeowners pay for the building materials based on terms they can afford. The Fuller Center is supported by three retail stores, which accept donated items from the public. The reused store features construction supplies, appliances, and furniture. The Fuller Shop carries housewares and decorative items for the homes as well as books, videos, and jewelry, while the Rabbit Hole sells gently used clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Visit all three stores at 955 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond or call 985-419-0256 to schedule a pickup. For details on volunteer opportunities, find them on Facebook under Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center or visit www.gingerfordnorthshore.org. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. We're now going to come right here to the University Center and check out as the Lions took on Dillard. Lance Pittman had the call. Turnover against Dillard. Jenkins on the move left to right into the front court. Jenkins going down low to Hudson. Devontae off the glass, 2-0. Lions 
little high-low action there. Jenkins from up top, down low to Upson. 2-0, 30 seconds gone by. With the rebound, he'll find Allman. Allman will give it up to uh, Chapman. Chapman shots in and out, no good. And the rebound to the Lions. Ochi on the move, is going to take it coast to coast. He'll flip one off the glass in, and it's 4-0 Lions. Minute and a half gone by. He was going to try and bounce pass to Upson, got knocked away. Jenkins here to pick it up. Three ball, no good. Rebound Upson. Upson with the slam dunk. He just went around Jenkins. Timeout taken by Dillard here with 16.52 to go. Kind of reminds me. First it, find Jenkins up top. Fakes right, goes left. A little high-low, down low to Upson. Devontae missed the first one. Got his own rebound and put it back in. The old ABA stance there. Missed the shot, but you paid your rebound stats. Fakes left, goes right. Taking it all the way in. Laying it up and scores. And it's 13-5. Phil Moore, a three in and a bucket right there. He's got five. Love to get it in an up and down contest here. Lions like to run too. Fillmore another three. That one good. And a timeout taken by Jay Ladner. So Fillmore's on an 8-0 run just by himself. Mangio with the basketball right corner. Back up top Fillmore around the horn of Greaves. Greaves finds Rump left wing. Shot clock at 8. Zach dribbles. One-handed pass to Mangio. Mangio for three. That one good. Dylan knocks it in from the near corner. Mazio's got a couple of threes on the year. In the back dribble into the front court. Off to Greaves on the right side. Greaves for three, hits it. And the Lions have an 11-point lead. Daniel really starting to shoot it well from way outside. Has uh, 11 three balls on the year. I mean, the bench uh, is a little deeper here. Guillory, alley-oop to Ochi. Ochi will lay it up. Assist to Guillory. Bucket for Ochi, 25-12 to 12 with... 9.50 to go, first half. Point lead. Ochi around his man. Laid it up and in. He blew around Pratt. And Ochi's got 6, 27, 14. Lions by 13. Up to Greaves. Greaves with a head fake. Going to blow past his man. Lay it up and in. He got around Thompson. Thompson took the head fake. Daniel put it on the floor and let it up. 29-17, Lions by 12. Dillard man-to-man. Bounce pass right side, Ochi. Ochi trying to get around this man. He'll spin. He'll shoot. Lay it up and in. 10 points for Ochi. 35-19. Dillard slaps the basketball. He's looking. Gets it in the rump. Zach in the middle of Giants. He'll raise it up and in. Nice job by Zach Rump. As uh, Dylan drives, lays it up, missed it. Barclay the rebound there. That one's in, and Barclay's got his first two. Nice baseline drive by Dylan, but he drew, hold it up, and down low to Ochi. Ochi left alone will finger roll one up and in. He's got 12 here in the first half. 41-22. Maggio applying pressure. Barclay with the steal. Down the floor to Ochi. Ochi one dribble. Slam dunk on the other end. Ochi high off the floor. Kick that one home. Ochi. Down low to go. Mazio laid it up and in. Good backdoor cut. Good pick. And Fillmore down low. Here at the half. 48-22. Ups and powering it in. And we'll lay it up and score. A nice move. He got around Jenkins. Devontae's 6'7". Jenkins is listed as 6'6". Key. Jenkins, three ball far wing. That one good. Cedric got a three ball here. The Lion leads 29-53-24. Down up top, Ochi. Underneath the ups and Devontae the slam dunk. 55-24. And off Jenkins. Near side, Gillery. Gillery down low to ups and Devontae spinning. Shoves it off. Ochi powers it up. Off the glass and in. Another bucket for Ochi. There's 15 minutes. Five minutes gone by. Second half. Jenkins steps up for three. Good. Cedric has uh, eight points tonight. That's his second three. Fillmore in the middle of the paint. Give and go. Greaves. Ten foot jumper wide. Open good. The South Pawn knocked it home. 63 28. Dewey picked up by Fillmore. Fillmore bounces it up to Upson. Upson another tomahawk slam dunk. Devontae's got to think it's uh, Santa has come again here with his near corner. No good. Rebound to Fillmore. Fillmore bounce pass to Greaves. Daniel lays it up and in. 67 28. 
The Lions' final regular season non-conference tune-up as they get ready for Southland Conference play here coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, let's go back out and hear from Coach Jay Ladner and his thoughts on the game against Dillard. You know, it's, a, it's a great feeling when you get the whole team involved. You know, you got everybody contributing. They really want to win. Uh, we really wanted to come out with a bang to start off our second half of the season going into uh, Stephen F. Austin. We feel like we needed this to play really good defense, play offense, uh, play collectively together. So we had to get it done today. It's really beautiful, you know, when everyone's hitting shots and everyone's working together. Someone's making an extra pass and making another person better. And that's the thing the coach preaches every day, you know, to get everyone involved and work as a team because no, no one man can win the game. You know, we have to be a team unit. And that's what we did tonight. We told our players, and, and that will, as long as I'm employed here at Southeastern, as long as they'll have me, um, our exhibition games, as long as there's an opponent, officials, fans, and people in uniform, we're going to play to win. And um, now the other side of that, Todd, is we were able to play a lot of players because of the score, but we were playing to win. And, I, and I'm, I'm glad that we did that because some of those guys, we needed to get some of those guys on the floor. Thanks, Coach Ladner, as we now look forward to watching the Lions take on Stephen F. Austin as Southland Conference play begins here coming up pretty quickly. All right, we're now going to take a look at our Lion Profile of the Week, and this week we take a look at Coach Ladner's father, J. Larry Ladner. If you mention the name Jay Ladner to any Southeastern basketball fan, that fan would probably think you were talking about current Southeastern head coach Jay Ladner. But you could also be talking about Jay Larry Ladner. That's right, the dad of the current head coach. And it's safe to say, basketball is important to every Ladner. As he was introducing me, I was sitting to the right of the podium. He said, Coach Ladner, he said, in the presence of 577 people, I want to tell you how much we appreciate you coming and taking time to speak at our athletic banquet, the largest banquet in the history of Jones County Junior College. He said, I would like to ask you a question. He said, is there any such thing as a Ladner not ever having played basketball? <laughs> and so I suppose that would answer your question, but basketball has been a, a very integral part of my family's life. And J. Larry Ladner graduated from Kell High School in 1955 after a distinguished playing career where he was selected All-State in 1954 and 55 and was the first player from Hancock Ouch. County to be named to the North-South All-Star Game. Ladner played collegiately at Pearl River Community Community College and Louisiana College and all along he just wanted to give something back to the game that gave him and his family so much. I've tried to give something back to the sport. I've tried to be a promoter of basketball and to give back in every way that I possibly could. Having said that, I think that that personally I've been able to use basketball as a vehicle to assist me in getting where I want to go in life. And um, it's been good for our children. We have two daughters and two sons, and all four have played basketball, and all four have done well. After spending his whole life around the game of basketball, Jay Larry Ladder now spends his time watching his son coach. I would have to say his intelligence and his basketball, basketball IQ is, is extremely high. Yeah, he's a goal setter. He's very passionate about what he does. And I think all those factors added together have contributed to his degree of success. Yes, he has been successful at St. Stanislaus and Oak Grove and Jones County Junior College, but I think he would be the first one to say, I give all the credit and glory to God Almighty. In 1991, when his son got his first head coaching job at St. Stanislaus, J. Larry Ladner told his son he would never interfere with on-court decisions made by his son. He told Jay if he ever needed advice, he would help. And sometimes he has had to bounce some things off of Dad. Uh, very few times. Uh, I found that his degree of knowledge, his expertise in the game of basketball, his knowledge, and his passion have been such contributors to success. But then, yes, there have been times that we've, we've sat down and discussed certain aspects of the game. There was a time in his life when it looked like Jay Ladner would not follow in his dad's footsteps as a coach. When he went off to college, Jay had his sights set on the medical field. But being a around dad on the court all those years had the final say. He graduated in pre-med and uh, planned to go to med school and was offered the head basketball job at, at St. Stanislaus and we sat down and discussed that very seriously but in the final analysis he said daddy he said I'm going to be honest with you he said I want to be a doctor but following you around all these years it's always been in the back of my mind about coaching and so he said St. Stanislaus is the only type of school that I would forego going to med school to go into coaching. I'm young enough if, to, if I go into coaching I see it's not something I want to pursue as a career, I'm still young enough to go to med school. 
Well, obviously, 22 years later, he's he, he's his coach, and then uh, he's uh, he's found his niche. All right, coach, is a pretty neat piece right there on your father, and uh, our fathers, Austin, have. Uh, pretty big influences on our lives and so no doubt that your, your father had one with you. Well there's no question uh, I, I feel very blessed and privileged to be honest with you to have such a great family and uh, uh, my, and I say that from a personal sense you know but my father and my mother obviously were huge influences. I was blessed to grow up in a very good home, good Christian home so I feel very blessed with that. Uh, my dad uh, growing up uh, the son of a basketball coach I got a, an opportunity to kind of be on the inside of things and, and, and learn a lot about a game that I eventually loved and now I've made my profession. Alright let's go ahead and take our final break when we come back we'll take a look at the scouting report right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern basketball. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. As we now turn our attention, coach, we've been kind of teasing it the whole show, talking about Southland Conference play coming up. And coach, you start with a, a big task. You start on the road at the defending Southland Conference champion, Stephen F. Austin. This is a team that had a win in the NCAA tournament team, uh, NCAA tournament a year ago. Very good basketball team you're going to take on in the uh, first game. I'm not sure who I've upset, but, uh, <laughs> you know, our, our non-division, I mean, our non-league schedule uh, this year, we've played almost every game on the road against as some, some of the rankings have us as the toughest non-conference schedule in the country. Uh, and then we open up league play with the uh, team that was, went 18-0 and last year, ran the table and got to the round of 32 and were very close to making the Sweet 16 and got a lot of their players back, a great coach and Coach Brad Underwood. So, you know, certainly I'm not living right in some aspects, so I need to evaluate that. But uh, it's, it's kind of what we've come to expect here. Uh, again, we like mentioned our tough schedule ahead of time. Hopefully that's prepared us to play in a tough environment against a very good, talented and very well coached team. They've already gone to Memphis and won. They've got an outstanding non-league record. Um, so, you know, it'll be a great challenge for us. But again, it's kind of what we've seen so far in our preseason. So we look forward to it. Well, there you have it. The Lions will take on Stephen F. Austin. Make sure you follow your Lions at lionsports.net. You can also listen to the radio play-by-play -play call of Lance Pittman if you can't make the trip over to Nagadoche. That's going to do it for us. For Coach Jay Ladner, I'm Alan Waddell. See you next week.